And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be going back to the prehistoric age. We're going to be eating little guys, furry critters. We're going to be fighting predators. We're going to be attacking friends. We're going to be stealing each other's eggs in Velociraptor Cannibalism by Board Raptor Games, powered by Gamesloot. Uh, from three to six players, takes about 45 minutes to play. It's a fun, light little card game with interesting artwork, fun things to do. Let's check it out. I'll show you how it's played. See you on the other side. At the beginning of the game, you get to choose one of many different dinosaurs to start with. They all have interesting looks. Look at this guy named Brian. He looks kind of cool. Look at that. Reginald. Hmm. With a nice little monocle and a little tuxedo type bow tie. Fleet Captain Morgan. Arr, matey. Look at this guy. He's really cool. A pirate dinosaur. We have Cold Cuts, who has like a little cigarette hanging out of his mouth, it looks like. Looks kind of cool. Cool Joe. We have Raptotron 2000, who essentially is like a robot dinosaur. Pretty cool. We have Iggy, who's a punk rocker, looks like. We have Ace, who's just a cool guy with goggles. We have Sprinkles, who's got a funny little rabbit ears. Just a funny little dude. We have Grandpa Theobald. This comes with an expansion with the game that comes with a bunch of other monsters. This is old Grandpa. We have Julian, who looks like he can maybe fly a little bit, has a crazy looking head. We have Mortimo, who looks just kind of scared of everything. And then we have Randolph, who is part of, apparently he is a psycho ward wearing a straight jacket and he's drooling. Excellent. Okay, so I have my guy set up. We have three different decks set up. We have a climate deck where these are randomly assigned each game. A few of them are left out every game. We put the truce card on top. We have a jungle deck, a meat locker deck some eggs. The object of the game is to try to have the most of these eggs uh, in your sort of uh, either your nursery or on your side of the board at the end of the game. The game ends at the end of eight rounds or at the end of the round where, where all the eggs, the last egg has been taken out of there. So let's go through an individual turn. First thing we do is we pull a climate card which, which essentially is a sort of an event card and it says to start with a truce which is no player can attack another player this round. Then we choose a starting player randomly and we start their turn. And right on your board you can see your turn summary. We're going to go through hunt, eat, uh, act, and digest. So let's go through hunt, which is drawing the number of jungle cards that's equal to your speed. And when we start we have nothing special about our monster except what's here. So we have a speed of three. This is speed, this is attack, and this is defense. We have a speed of three. We're going to draw three jungle cards and hunt. So I've just dealt three jungle cards because my speed was three. And jungle cards can be one of three things. They can be prey, they can be event cards, or they can be predator cards. In this case, we got prey and event. The event is insomnia. I get minus one defense. Next time I'm attacked by another player, I have minus one towards my armor. Ooh, that's bad. And prey. These cards are so cute. The penguins, fluffy, muffy, whittle balls. How cute. Puppies, they just want to play. And this shows us how many calories these are when we eat them. So we've hunted and now we're going to eat, which essentially we consume the prey and we upkeep our body parts and then cannibalize if necessary. Let's take a look. Okay, so my prey adds up to 600 calories. I don't have any new pieces of monster parts or from the meat locker that cost anything additional to upkeep. If I did, you would subtract that. So right now I have 600 calories. This is how much I've been able to eat. Now I get to act. I can use calories to reproduce or mutate. Then I can attack a friend if I want. So. If I want to reproduce, it costs me 500 calories. If I want to mutate, it costs me 300 calories. Well, let's say I wanted to mutate. If you remember, I have two 300 type of, uh, uh, here, I have two, I have 600. So if I reproduced for 500, I would get an egg and it would go in my nursery. This is safe. Nobody can attack it until next turn. It stays right in my nursery. Uh, but since these two cards add up to 600, I don't get any change back. So I would have to literally discard these two cards for 600 calories. I would reproduce for 500. I'd have 100 left over, but I can't do anything because I actually had to use these, these, these cards here. So I could, uh, you know, I would do that and do that. Now, I could also mutate once or twice. Um, we'll talk about mutating in a second. If I mutated once, I can uh, use this card to mutate. Let's do that. Let's, let's discard this card and let's mutate. Okay, so I get one of these meat locker cards. Ooh, we see it is a tiger head. Look at that. So we would now place this on our uh, dinosaur. 
So we're gonna put that card right on his head. Look at that, we've got a tiger head now. And we have, it adds zero speed, four attack, and zero defense. So to our total attack, we have three plus four, so our attack is at seven now. But it costs us 300 calories just to upkeep this body part starting on the turn after this. Now, if you remember, I still have this 300 left. I could mutate again. You can re, uh, mutate and reproduce as many times as you can afford to. I still have this 300 left over. Uh, I don't want to use it, so I actually could put it in my stomach and use this in a later turn. You could hold up, I think it's four cards into, this, into your stomach to use for later. Then it would go to the next person's turn. Of course, now, after I had used the attack, the act, I could have attacked a friend, which essentially is looking over at somebody and seeing if my attack value is bigger than their defense value. And if so, I could steal any eggs that aren't in their nursery, or I could steal a body part from them. Uh, there is a variant that you roll a die to do this, where you know, you're, if you roll a one, it subtracts two from your attack, and if you roll better, it adds to the attack. It makes it a little uncertain. It actually makes it, in my opinion, a little bit more fun, but that's what happens if you attack an opponent. Okay, let's say it has gone through the trial turn. It's my turn again. We flip up a new climate card. It's mating season. The cost of all reproduction is down to 300 calories, where normally it would cost 500. So that's it for this whole round. And since my speed is still three, I would pull three cards from the jungle deck. Okay, so I drew three cards. I have a prey. That's 200 calories. Eggs. Breakfast served all day. I have an event called Stubborn. You cannot mutate during this turn. Ah, oh, crap. And we have a predator. Look at this. This tells us that either his attack level is five. So either... We either have to have an attack level greater than this or a defense level greater than that. Either one to beat it. If we tie, nothing happens. If we lose and we're not higher, we have to flee and it costs us 200 calories. Uh, and if we uh, beat it, we, depending on the monster, some of them uh, actually give us some certain things. If you defeat some monsters, they just give you actually calories uh, to, to use that round. For example, um, we have this guy, like a bear, if you beat him, you get to basically just use him as prey. Essentially, you've gotten 500 calories for that round. But these type actually allow you to equip them. In this case, that you would equip these as wings, you'd get plus two uh, um, speed, and they don't cost anything to upkeep, which is really good. So our attack value is seven, it's higher than five. So we beat this guy, he goes into our wings, which is right here, essentially. And this gives us two extra speed and we don't have to use anything to count it up. Now we have our prey here and we have our event, if you remember, that we cannot, um, we cannot mutate. And now we're going to eat. So here's a problem here. This doesn't cost anything additional. This costs 300. We have 200 and we have 300 from our stomach. So we're going to have to take the 300 from our stomach to upkeep our head. And then we're left with 200 here. Um, and so normally we would just go to the stomach here. Now, if all we had was this 200, we had nothing in our stomach, and I was supposed to use this for 300 and I didn't have enough, this is where you'd have to cannibalize. So you could pick anything that you'd want. This is the only one I can really cannibalize at this point. And I eat it. It essentially acts like prey now. So now I have 500 to use that I could use to then reproduce or mutate. Now it says we have this card here, if you remember at the beginning of the round, it's 300 to... Um, to, uh, which we call it, to reproduce. So we would take $300 and we put an egg there. We have 200 calories left over that I would then put in my stomach for next round. This will stay in my nursery until it gets back to my turn. At the beginning of my next turn, it then comes out and people can try to attack me to steal. Because if you remember, after you uh, reproduce or mutate, if you do either of those or neither, you can still attack a friend. Again, it's your attack versus their defense. It's you. If you have more, you can steal either an egg or you can steal um, you know, a body part from them. Now, if I had um, needed to cannibalize and I had an egg, you have to eat the egg first and that gets you 400 calories. If I didn't have any eggs, then you could do the body parts. So over the course of the game, as you're going through the meat locker and adding things, you, your monster can look really crazy and it's always gonna look different by the end. And of course, the more things you have, the more attacking and the more defense you have, but also the more upkeep you have every round, more calories you're gonna have to consume. So it's a balance of trying to build up your monster to be able to attack others, to steal eggs, to be big enough so they can't steal an egg from you and trying to get all these eggs. The game ends when uh, either eight rounds ends or all these eggs are taken up. The one who has the most eggs is the winner. I want to show you how cute some of these cards are. Uh, some of the prey kittens omg kittens you guys cupcakes we have the wild muffin top sloths smugly wuggly doodah 
Baby seals, it's okay, they forgive you. <laughs> Chinchillas, they were born afraid. Baby birds, get them while they're hot. Aw, how cute. Carrots, little known fact, they can feel fear. And the seals again, it's okay, they forgive you. So funny. Uh, and some of these other cards of the junk of the meat locker look really cool too. And just to give you guys some ideas of the different things you could put on your monsters, like praying mantis claws or wasp wings, dragon tails, elephant tails, elephant stompers, uh, prehensile tail, crocodile jaws, gecko tail, raven tail, eagle wings. So you get the point. Skunk tail, they're, they're just pretty cool. All right, there's Velociraptor Cannibalism, which uh, sounds weird, but this is a lighter family game that's fun to play with little kids and stuff because they laugh. Uh, you know, it's got a good replayability value because every time you play, you're going to want to change your monster up and make it look completely different, uh, which is fun. Of course, you know, those little the first few times you play the game, the sayings on those little prey cards are just hilarious, the fuzzy wuzzy whittle guys. And then, of course, by the 18th time, it's not going to be as funny, but still, you'll still have those different monsters that you can sort of, you know, mutate into, which is always going to be fun and they're always going to be sort of different. Uh, so it's a light card game, even though it's about cannibalism, it's still very light. The artwork is very fun and comical, so even though sometimes you might have to eat your head, which might sound terrible to a, uh, you know, a nine or ten year old, it's just done in such light fun that uh, it's okay for kids. So uh, it, it's a fun, light fun family game. Uh, we laughed a lot. We played it a lot. We, uh, it, it, hey, it's good for teaching math. I mean, you're, you're teaching calories and how many you're taking versus how many you got to upkeep. And hey, I've got some extra. What am I going to do with it? Uh, should I save it for later? Should I mutate? Should I reproduce? So there is some decision making. It's not heavy. It's very light decision making. Uh, it's very luck based, um, you know, during, on what you're going to do. So there are some decisions to make, but it's very light. Um, it's just a fun, very beer and pretzels type of light. You can talk around the game while you're playing this. Um, very, you know, sort of a, a longer, it's a little longer for a filler, but uh, I like it better with the less amount of people, like, you know, uh, because when it's your turn, you won't really know what you're doing until you pull the cards. Um, and so by the time, if you have six players, there's gonna be five other people drawing three cards, thinking what they're gonna do, do this, do that, maybe attack. So by the time it gets around you, there is some downtime with the with the higher players. Uh, but like three or four, it's it's fun and it's it's a great little light game. So if the artwork looks good to you, if it looks like something you're gonna laugh at and play, uh, and you know it's light going into it, it's gonna be fun around beer and pretzels, and you're gonna laugh, you might wanna look out Velociraptor Cannibalism. Hey, one more thing before you go. If you're about to drop a comment on this YouTube page for this video and you're expecting interaction or a personal response from me, uh, I recommend the place to do that is at my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash thegameboygeek because I don't get notified when YouTube videos get comments on the Dice Tower Network because I don't own the channel. So if you want to interact with me directly, I'll see you at my Facebook page. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>